Support for Digging Deeper comes from the Penn State Alumni Association, keeping alumni connected to the university and to each other. Membership information at alumni.psu.edu slash belong. And from viewers like you. Thank you. Hi, I'm Andrew Destin. After eight years of serving as president of Penn State, Dr. Eric Barron will be retiring this summer. President Barron launched and oversaw many important programs during his tenure, including the Invent Penn State Initiative, the Greater Penn State for 21st Century Excellence Campaign, and many others. He will be succeeded by Dr. Neely Bendapudi. Prior to coming to Penn State, Dr. Bendapudi served as Provost and Executive Vice Chancellor at the University of Kansas from 2016 to 2018 and is president of the University of Louisville since 2018. On this episode of Digging Deeper, Penn State President Eric Barron will talk to incoming President Ben DeButi about our vision for the university and what comes next for Penn State. So welcome. First of all, let me give you a really, uh, you know, warm welcome to, to Penn State. I ho hope it's starting, starting well. I think a lot of people are, would be curious to know that here it is, your happily a president at, at Louisville. What, what drew you to Penn State? Ah, the perfect man to ask the question, <laughs> President Barron. Yeah. Um, I'll be candid. Initially, I wasn't so sure uh, that I would uh, be interested. In fact, I'd said no, not because of Penn State, but because I had so much more to do at Louisville. But I'm glad they said, no, you should take a look at it. And when, the, when my husband and I sat down and really looked at it, it quickly became apparent there's truly no other institution like Penn State in the entire country. Uh, the reach through the Commonwealth campuses, the breadth of areas that we study, the contributions we make to both create and disseminate knowledge, and of course, how Penn State is the economic development engine for mm -hmm. Pennsylvania. So we said, you know, Penn State doesn't come along every day. This is just a unique opportunity, and we are delighted to be here. Yeah, I'm glad you know. It's interesting that at Florida State, my chief of staff said, I really wish these people at Penn State would pick someone. We think it's the only place you would leave Florida State Aww. for is to, was to go to Penn State. Yeah. I felt that's extra bad to then say. Um, I am actually going. <laughs> I am actually going. I so, you know, now you've had a chance to be here, completely different than an interview situation. And maybe we'll take University Park and Happy Valley first, and, and then I know you're visiting campuses. Happy Valley, what's your, what's your first impressions? I can see why it's called Happy Valley. Mm -hmm. It's beautiful. Uh, people have been incredible. I think we should tell everyone first uh, how wonderful it is of you to make this opportunity available to me. Because I'm sure they're saying, how come both of them are here? So I want to first say thank you to you, Eric, for this transition period. So yes, in terms of Happy Valley, um, the night we came in was the big snowstorm, you know? And about five weeks ago, and my husband said to me, Venkat said to me, boy, you love being here because usually I'll complain. Mm -hmm. And I still have been smiling the entire time. Mm -hmm. uh, people have been so gracious. I love college towns. Mm -hmm. There's just a, a wonderful atmosphere. It's like every step you take, you can sense the potential. Because yeah. you see the students, you see the faculty, you see the staff. And of course, um, it's... What's not to like? I, I, I'm really enjoying being here. Good. I'm, I'm glad. I, I feel there's something about a college town, and this is a really special college town. So, but we have a whole lot of college towns <laughs> as part of Penn State, and I've often thought nobody can really understand Penn State as well as the leadership that has a chance to go see every campus. And you're, you're on a mission right now. I am on a mission. And so for everybody listening, if I start coughing, they'll have to excuse me because uh, it's an occupational hazard, right? Mm -hmm. uh, I have made it more than halfway through each of our Commonwealth campuses. And I 
during the interview process, I said it, I said it to you, one of the main draws for me of Penn State was this land-grant mission, which is so typified in each of our Commonwealth campuses. And what I now realize, if you've seen one Commonwealth campus, you've seen one Commonwealth mm -hmm. campus. They're all so unique. The challenges they face, the ecosystem of industry, of uh, uh, demographics, of what's happening locally. It just it fills me with pride mm -hmm. to watch the students and the faculty and staff at each of these places. Mm -hmm. And when you go, are you getting the chance, and this is a funny question to ask maybe, to tell them what your life story is like? Sometimes I do. It depends on the questions they ask. Yeah. I'm actually very much following your advice. Uh, when I go to these uh, locations, I want to make sure I have ample time with the faculty and staff, then with external constituencies. Mm -hmm. um, that's been so gratifying. So today in Altoona, uh, to be able to see Steve Sheets, uh, you know I was on their board for many, many yes, years. Yeah. Uh, so to see uh, people that I know and uh, new people that are so invested in the launch boxes and the entrepreneurial activities. And sometimes they will ask questions. Yeah. Uh, students, I spend yeah. time with the students. And they usually ask me and uh, I tell them how I am living testament to the transformative power of higher education. Mm -hmm. um, Eric, till we came to the United States, we never had running water. Mm -hmm. And or the confidence that you could just turn on a switch and there would be electricity. Mm -hmm. So these things, are, no question in my mind, are in my life because of higher education. Mm -hmm. So it's really a, a mission, a goal, a challenge, an opportunity to create those opportunities for the next generation. Yeah, so do you see things emerging, you know, if you had great experiences at all? Ohio State and Kansas and Louisville. Do you see how your life and upbringing has created sort of a deliberate focal points in how you run a university and what you what you like to think about? Um, yes. In fact, I don't think this was by design, mm -hmm. but sometimes life experiences come together to do, yeah. shape us uh, to be uh, ready for certain roles. I'm with you. I had said no to other universities. Mm -hmm. And uh, again, great universities, no question about it. But at Penn State, it felt to me that the unique experiences I have had along the way, and you're right, uh, my academic home uh, in many ways, the journey from assistant to full professor was at Ohio State or Kansas or Louisville or Texas A&M, all great universities. To me, in addition to those, I have been very fortunate mm. as a personal story to be a business professor that got to work with a different business every single year. Mm -hmm. So for about six months of a year, I would be the traditional professor, but I had the unique opportunity to watch mm -hmm. how different industries, um, different businesses, the US Army, so it wasn't just business, yeah. how different organizations were facing the challenges they, mm -hmm. you know. So I'm hoping that what I studied at the Mayo Clinic may come in handy. Mm -hmm. uh, what I studied about the US Army in terms of preparedness and building teams mm -hmm. might come in handy. Yeah. So yeah, I feel like this is the place I was meant to be. Mm -hmm. After all, my name means blue. Yeah. So I'm in the right place. <laughs> oh, I, I agree. I agree. It's, one, it's a wonderful color to have a name sit there in a dress. So, uh, and Eric does not at all. So, ah. you know, what, what <laughs> but a, Eric bleeds you know, blue and white. He does. He, re he really, really does. So in talking to all the folks on the campuses, all the campuses, um, are, are you giving people a sense of, of the things you want to tackle right now? Um, I've told them that the beauty of what you have done, your leadership, the leadership team you have assembled, is it's not like this is a turnaround situation. Yeah. It is not at all a situation where you have to come in and very quickly say, how do I stop the bleeding? What do I do? 
it's a wonderful opportunity to build on success. Mm -hmm. So I told them what you told me, that every leader wants the person who succeeds them when you care about an institution to take it to even greater heights, right? Mm -hmm. We hope that everybody builds on what is there. So I am very eager to continue some of the outstanding work. Mm -hmm. Of course, each of us will put our own uh, mark on things, yeah. the way we do things. But for me, as it was for you, student success is number one, mm -hmm. without question. Yeah. How are we going to equip our students, not just to graduate from college, but what do, how do we prepare them for what comes next, for mm -hmm. their jobs, for their careers? Mm -hmm. I really want to focus on how do we invest in our faculty and staff. Um, throughout the pandemic, we have all applauded our healthcare heroes. Yeah. And we absolutely need to do that. But to me, inside higher education, we have had some extraordinary heroes. Mm -hmm. Faculty and staff. Truly. Who've had to pivot on a dime, who check in on their students, not just their academic preparedness, but mental health, well-being. So I want to make sure we invest in them mm -hmm. because Penn State is the people. Yeah. Uh, and then, of course, I am deeply committed to economic development. Mm -hmm. I am a recovering banker. You yeah. know this about me. <laughs> uh, at Huntington Bank, we were a bank with about $55 billion in assets at the time, um, about 12,000 associates. And as the executive vice president there, I could see what happens in communities that are thriving and growing. So I'm deeply, deeply committed mm -hmm. to that. Uh, finally, I, because of my own research and interest, I want to spend quite a bit of time on Penn State Health, mm -hmm. such a gem, our College of Medicine, and build even stronger ties to the excellence at University Park. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with you completely. I think the health enterprise is one of those areas that we could perform at, a, we're doing well, but we could perform at a much, much higher level. So what would you tell a high school student right now about what will happen here with you in the next, hopefully, a decade? I hope so, from yeah. your lips to God's ears. <laughs> um, uh, I think I would tell a high school student that wherever they go, uh, the beauty of one Penn State and the Commonwealth campuses uh, is that wherever they go, they will get a world-class degree. But I'll tell them that they need to come and experience what we are means. Penn State is not about I am. Mm -hmm. I'm very drawn to that. Yeah. Penn State about, is about we are. It's about building those ties. It's a sense of family. Mm -hmm. It's a sense of community. And so to me, as a young person that's coming here to make a difference in the world, mm -hmm. I will tell them, you can come to a big university like ours and very quickly make it feel small, whether you're at a Commonwealth campus or you're in a student club or you're in Thon, whatever the activity is, you can create a small community. But you cannot go to a small place and make it feel big. You can't. And so I just love that about Penn State. Mm -hmm. There's something here for everyone. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll tell them one more thing. I will genuinely listen to the students. You know, that's my heart, no mm -hmm. question. So I will tell them that in the four years they're here, Penn State will change them. But the beauty of Penn State is they will change Penn State too. Mm -hmm. You can leave an imprint here. You can, you can. make a difference here. Mm -hmm. Okay, so let's switch it to the graduating seniors. Your commencement address. What, what's the message for them? It's your commencement address yeah. this yeah. time. It I is. have a whole year. Yeah. Yeah. I have a whole year. Well, summer. Uh, okay, summer. <laughs> fair, fair, fair. I haven't really thought about it yet. Mm -hmm. I'll think about it. I know that I will tell them that there is a blue and white tapestry that ties together generations that have come before them mm -hmm. and generations that will come after them. And that I want them to know this will always be home to them. Mm -hmm. I want them to stay connected. Yeah. Uh, I might tell them that when you graduate from a university, 
It's like you've bought stock in a company. You know, when that university does well, you feel pride. And yeah, if yeah. someone criticizes it, you take it personally. So I want them to remember what Penn State has done for them and then to reach back and help the next generation. Mm -hmm. I will have the advantage. I get to listen to your remarks, yeah, sir. Yeah, okay. So I'll well, take good notes. N now you put a lot of pressure on me to do a good job. So Eric I'm Barron, gonna, I'm I gonna... don't need to put pressure on you. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, you have also had in, in traveling around the op and in telephone calls and all the contacts, you've, you've had um, the opportunity to talk to what I would say is a combination of our friends and our alumni. Every campus has advisory groups. We have major donors that you've busily been working to introduce yourself to other, other stakeholders in this particular process. There's another we are message there in a lot of ways, but what are you, what are you learning from them and, 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 um, and what's important that they know uh, about a Ben Deputy administration? Um, I hope that they know that we'll put student success front and center. Mm -hmm. I tell them that I know that they stay connected. They give huge kudos to the people who serve on these advisory boards and donate and come and show up and mentor our students. They're doing it out of a sense of gratitude, out of a sense of pride. Mm -hmm. So I tell them that I will, I take it very seriously. I will do my best. I will give this 100% of my energy, of my time, because I know how critical this is as a, as a, a calling, as a job, as the greatest honor of my professional uh, life. Uh, so I want them to know we'll stay focused on students. I tell them that I'm genuinely collaborative. I hope that you will reassure them that I'm a good listener. Yeah. I want to learn from people. Mm -hmm. I know that I tell them that don't expect all the great ideas to come from old Maine. Yeah. I hope some do. Yeah. Otherwise, I'm not doing my job. Yeah. But we're in a world where there are great ideas everywhere. Mm -hmm. And we want them all to feel part of the solution to the big challenges facing us. Mm-hmm. It's a good message. It's a very good message. So now you see the year coming ahead of you, all sorts of events and activities. Do you have any that you're particularly looking forward to? So many. <laughs> I am uh, very, very enthusiastic about truly exploring uh, campus, mm -hmm. uh, meeting students, and um, I, I'm being greedy because Heather, mm -hmm. our wonderful Heather, yeah. Uh, shows me all of the things I could do. Yeah. And right now I'm in, like a ch kid in a candy shop. I want to do this. I want to do this. Yeah. I want to do this. And uh, I actually have uh, time set aside to talk to you mm -hmm. about how did you pick and choose. There are so yeah. many incredible activities. I want to make sure I see every aspect of the university. Yeah, it is a lifetime's work, I think, in, in so many different in so many different ways. Okay, so now let's take ten years. What do you think the university will be like? I hope stronger than ever. I yeah. hope more united than ever. I hope that in every area of what we do, we have all gotten better. Mm -hmm. The truth is, no matter how fantastic we are. If we don't improve, we are going to be left behind. Yeah. And so it's a, I hope that we take the attitude stronger today than yesterday, mm -hmm. right? First of all, internal comparison, mm -hmm. that we are striving to do better. And we're also looking at the trends outside in the world. Mm -hmm. uh, and I hope that we continue this legacy where if I'm talking to a high school student, if I'm talking to an alum, alumna, they will say that you will call me in 10 years and say, good job, yeah. you, did, you did what you were supposed <laughs> to do, you took it to greater heights. Yes, well, that's, that's a, just a great way to think. So, you know, it's amazing how fast this time went, and so I can barely sneak in another question. How can everybody help you be successful? 
Oh, what a wonderful question. So many ways. Uh, the time, talent, treasure uh, that people have. I will make it easy. Uh, it's been a tough time for everyone. Uh, so if there's a professor that has made a difference to you, write to them, tell them thank you. If you see a student, wherever you are, just say hello to them. There's a sense of uh, uh, appreciation that we all need. Uh, come back to campus. Mm -hmm. Take advantage of the incredible things we have going on. When I say come back to campus, remember, I'm not just talking about University Park. Right. Come to our campus, wherever we are. And please let us be partners in helping the Commonwealth, the country, and beyond. Great message. Thanks so much for being on the show. It's wonderful to think about this transition, to have an opportunity to have a conversation like this. Uh, Eric, thanks to you and thanks to Molly. Yeah. Uh, uh, big shoes to fill, but I will do my best. You, you've got it. You've got it. Thank you so much. So, thank you. Dr. Darren, a pleasure to speak with you once more. And Dr. Ben Anapudi, it's a pleasure to meet you. Um, just wanted to ask each of you a few questions, obviously, with the changing of the guard here with the presidential leadership position for the university. And uh, Dr. Ben, I'll give it to you first. What okay. are you excited about with having Dr. Ben Napudi come aboard as Penn State's next president? Well, you know, I think sometimes presidencies change abruptly or there's, um, you know, a, an interim and, and then a hire. And, and there's not the kind of conscious transition that makes everything run smoothly and, and you have a chance to, to really smile as you go out the door because you know the university you love is in good hands. And so I think one of the things I'm really excited about is that I know the university is in good hands and, and, uh, and we have this transition period that, that, that allows Neely to have a, a fast start uh, when when she takes the reins in, uh, in in May, so that to me is exciting, because I don't think it happens all the time. And now, Dr. Benapudi, in terms of long-term plans, I know you'll be getting a quick start here, but long-term plans and goals for Penn State. Is there anything in particular you immediately want to address or immediately would like to change within the university? I wouldn't say change because there's so many good things here and uh, I want to come and learn. But certainly we were just talking about this uh, and my thank you to Dr. Barron too because this period of transition and his being available to me, uh, he's not allowed to change his cell phone number so I can reach out and ask questions. There's so much good, but certainly none of us can be complacent. We need to, to improve all the time. So my number one goal is student success. That's why we exist. So really focusing on preparing our students, the graduation, but beyond graduation to great jobs. Those 14-figure jobs like you were talking about. <laughs> <laughs> no, but seriously, how do we help each student uh, be transformed for the better and feel uh, that they're ready to make a tremendous impact. Yeah, and uh, you mentioned it a little bit there, but I guess um, with advancing the university forward, one of the challenges, I guess, with Penn State, and this is a question for both of you, is maintaining the tradition that's helped get the university where it is today, but to continuing advance this university forward. What are some of those challenges, and Dr. Brand, maybe you can speak to this as well, given your uh, leadership in this position, but what do those challenges look like, and um, what advice would you say to Dr. Benaputi to help navigate those? You know, there are, there are always challenges. Well, you know, one has to be resources. The capability of this institution to advance on so many different fronts is clear. And resources are tighter, and we don't want to put it on the backs of students. And so we really have to prioritize a lot, a, a lot more. That's always a challenge when you realize you could have significant impact on a lot of broad areas. And, and truthfully, we have a more divided country. And yet we're home to, you know, the greatest melting pot that you can possibly imagine. And so that presents special challenges. I think those are the two things I'd say first. Those are great, uh, great, great answers. But the beauty of Penn State and the beauty of higher education is we are a great convener. We are supposed to bring people together and have those debates. With students, I do tell them, I have been on these 
whirlwind tour of all of our Commonwealth campuses. So I do say that if anyone can get this done, it's Penn State. And if any place in the world can get it done, it's the United States. And so I feel such confidence that we will figure out how to come together. And to your question, every great institution evolves. But what you said is so right. Uh, to do so in a manner that we don't lose sight of and don't forget what it is that makes us truly great. So for Penn State, to me, I love that Penn State is not a place that says, I am. Penn State is a place that says, we are. And so to both issues that President Barron brought up, if we can see that fundamentally we might be different in a thousand ways, but we probably are alike in 10,000 ways. Mm -hmm. And so to find what ties us together, and no matter who you are, if you come here and you say we are Penn State, then you are part of the family. Excellent. Dr. Bendapudi, Dr. Barron, thank you so much for your time and for all of it this uh, entire school year. It's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you both for your time and a pleasure meeting you, Dr. Bendapudi. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> to you as well. Support for Digging Deeper comes from the Penn State Alumni Association, keeping alumni connected to the university and to each other. Membership information at alumni.psu.edu slash belong. And from viewers like you, thank you.